Hi guys, this is tablenews.com and I'm here with the T-Class X98 Plus 2 tablet. It's yet another dual boot slate that comes with Windows 10 and Android 5.1 Lollipop. It's a 9.7 inch tablet that's priced at $164 on Gearbest.com. It relies on the Intel Cherry Trail processor. It's good for gaming and video watching, but also makes some compromises. So this affordable tablet measures 8mm in thickness, which is quite reasonable, and weighs a pretty hefty 568 grams which is a bit heavy and it's actually 100 grams heavier than the iPad Air 1 with the same diagonal. It has a metal back plate with a texture that feels like sand, it's matte and it has pretty good grip and the build is quite solid unlike the other Chewy model we tested recently, the back and the front are pretty well built and they don't creak at all. The front side attracts scratches, attracts fingerprints and grease but overall the tablet feels comfy in the hand if you're going to do some video watching and gaming we have those big bezels to rest your fingers on other than that rounded corners and slightly rounded edges and reasonably solid build for the price now as far as the screen goes it's a 9.7 inch IPS LCD 10 point touch and the resolution is 2048 over 1536 pixels and since we're on Android I'm going to have to resort to the only solution to play videos which is gallery, the pre-installed one and let's actually check out the video experience. Ok so first things first, we got the well calibrated colors, the brightness seems only reasonable at first sight, we have wide view angles, ok and as you can see the facade is very reflective. Ok now let's see how our test dealt with this tablet. So we got RGB stripes pixels as shown under the microscope and we achieved a brightness of 190 lux which is probably the lowest of all the models we've ever tested, it's the lowest ever, it basically should not be this low and uh, if you're going out in the sun or even in stronger indoors light you won't be able to see much on this display. It's even below the Chewy V8 Plus and it's 142 lux all the all view Viva H7 Life so it could be much much better as far as the brightness goes. Sometimes the touch does not exactly respond especially when I'm entering the gallery and touching certain aspects or photos so the touch sensor is not exactly perfect. The settings are the usual ones here and um, maybe one extra aside from the brightness, font size and etc. Got Intel Smart Video for uh, reduced noise and eliminated artifacts. Overall, a uh, pretty bad screen, no matter the price. Now, as far as the rest of the specs are concerned, we're getting an Intel Cherry Trail CPU, is the Intel Z8300, it's a quad-core chip at 1.44 GHz. The GPU is the Intel Generation 8 graphics and it's accompanied by 4 GB of RAM here, 64 GB of storage and we also have a micro SD card slot. You should probably know that on Android there's more or less no lag, although every once in a while the touch refused to respond and in Windows 10 we did have a bit of lag plus a problem so if you want to do some recovery and reinstall of the OS you may break the device but you should be able to find images of this uh, device software on the web. Now, as far as the gaming goes, we've got Riptide GP Renegade here, which is our latest benchmark game. It's a hovercraft racing title. It has uh, pretty solid graphics and it works solidly on this device. Okay, restoring our save with all the unlocked hovercrafts. And here we go. Let's see what the game looks like, if it drops any frames and if the controls are responsive or not. So far so good, water looks nice, controls seem responsive, not bad looking in this corner light. Once again, a low brightness, so depending on the quantity of light in your house, it may or may not look as good as you can see here. Ok, so gaming checks out, I don't see any stutter, lag or frame drops, so at least that's covered. Ok, now when it comes to the actual performance, we also have some benchmarks to show you. And those include Quadrant. So here we go, this is Quadrant and uh, we actually were able to score above the Chewy High 12, the tablet we recently tested, and not only in this benchmark, but also a few other ones. So this is Quadrant and we beat that model and the Zenpad 7, and uh, in Antutu, Antutu 6, we also performed pretty well. 
here we go that's the score once again we surpassed the chewy high 12 and the cube i7 remix while in the all important 3d mark i storm unlimited we have a very good score here surpassing even the samsung galaxy tab s2 9.7 and the ipad air for a generation but still scoring below the nokia n1 for example okay so aside from that we also did the temperature test which is available here and the good news is that there is no overheating we achieved 36.2 degrees celsius after the gaming session including the game you saw before and got up to 37.9 degrees after the benchmark gfx bench for the sake of information on android on this device you get 11.9 gigabytes of storage while on windows 10 you have 36 gigabytes of storage so keep that in mind now the battery inside this 9.7 incher is an 8000 milliampere hour lithium ion unit it's also a 3.8 volt unit and let's see how it did in our tests so first we started with the hd video playback test and the result goes something like this we achieved 4 hours and 57 minutes of video playback usually our tests are done at 200 lux units but this tablet cannot achieve that so that's a bummer it's a pretty weak result once again considering that all the other tablets were tested at that brightness it's superior to the cube i7 remix but under special conditions i mentioned before the brightness it's inferior to um even half of the xiaomi mi pad 1 if you want to make a comparison so the xiaomi mi pad 1 has double the video screen time of this model now when it comes to continuous usage you can simulate that with pc mark 4 hours and 28 minutes which is almost okay i would say it beats the evolio go fun 3g and the utok hello 7q which we tested a while ago still below the nokia n1 zenpad s 8.0 and many many other tablets the worst thing about the battery it takes a long really long while to charge 4 hours and 13 minutes it's unacceptable being almost on par with the duration of the playback and the pc mark now as far as the settings are concerned on windows 10 you can use those usual laptop like settings while on android we got battery and we got battery saver and that's that not impressive and especially since on paper we're promised seven hours of usage now on the video front we're done we're done with the battery time to go to the acoustics we got the dual speakers at the back and uh, one seems to be louder than the other so sometimes i felt that this was the only speaker other times that this was this one so let's go to the player and see how they do so it's an old school music app you can check it out here and you can press this and uh, let's go to the music here tap here and you can tweak the sound effects from here they're the stock ones bass boost surround sound and a couple of uh, genre presets as you can see the touch is not exactly responding well to my press at all times now let's listen to the music here we go This one seems a bit louder. Okay, so conclusions. The bass is rather okay, the volume is nice, and uh, all around the notes are pretty well heard. It's especially good in games and videos, music does not exactly impress. And we then did the decibel meter test. By the way, we have virtual volume buttons. That's something you don't see every day on a tablet. So let's see our decibel meter test which should be here somewhere here we go we achieved 80.5 decibels at the back of the device and at the front 80 decibels so slightly muffled only a bit it's not an impressive result it's above the Chewy V8 and the Chewy V8 Plus but below the Nokia N1 and it's 89 decibels or the iPad Air 2 and it's 86.3 decibels nothing special in the area of the acoustics or Windows 10 you have the Groove Music Player and now when it comes to the camera i'm going to skip over that very fast you get a 2 megapixel camera at the back 2 megapixel camera at the front not many options we got the grill we got the front camera we have the timer and a couple more options here resolution and quality and apparently manual exposure the camera is slow laggy the images are grainy it's nothing to write home about so only people who really see something impressive should use the tablet to take pictures as you can see blurry not clear grainy and foggy so totally unimpressive now when it comes to the browser you can either use chrome 
or this one called browser or you can also use uh, Microsoft Edge. I'm going to use the pre-installed one simply called browser and load up tabletnews.com and here we go looking for the line come on line okie dokie so as you can see quite slow still loading the site scrolling is pretty smooth and this is the virtual keyboard pretty well spaced but better spaced on windows 10 now once again about the browser we also did some tests and benchmarks and sun spider was unimpressive here but not exactly the lowest result i've seen i've seen much worse so at least there's that consolation i've seen phones modern phones achieve uh, worse scores so sun spider is let's say almost satisfactory we're done with the browser and done with the uh, keyboard aspect time to go to the connectivity area and just so you can believe me it's a dual boot tablet after all i'm going to press this and go to windows okay so on the connectivity front we're all covered with wi-fi bgn bluetooth 4.0 micro usb and then we have an entire area for the ports so here we go we got microphone audio jack this is the charging port there is the micro hdmi here and also micro usb the sd card slot micro sd card slot and there's that so the hdmi functions include modes display scale over scan conversation and that's all she wrote so micro hdmi probably the most interesting aspect here it wouldn't hurt if we got a full usb but the tablet would have been much thicker than eight millimeters that's for sure and um uh, let's see what else. I have to mention that the Wi-Fi keeps dropping on, on me quite often, both on Windows and Android, and that's not nice at all. So if you like the connectivity aspects you get here, keep in mind that the Wi-Fi may drop a bit. So this is Windows 10. I guess it's time to talk about the OS. Okay, so let's connect to uh, Wi-Fi. Okie dokie. And as usual, Windows 10 means it's Windows, it's got multiple desktops available here, it's got the start menu with all the tiles, and we have the option to uh, feel like back in the days of Windows 8 with a tablet mode. This is the tablet mode, these are all the apps, we got Excel, we got Word and PowerPoint if you want to work. As usual, Android is for fun and Windows is for work. You also have Cortana and you have Microsoft Edge, which sometimes crashed on me. We also got uh, the Xbox Live and its games integration and let's check out Microsoft's Edge browser. Here we go. Loading up tablet news and triggering the virtual keyboard which is actually comfier than the one on Android when it works. Folks, when it works. Tablet news. Here we go. So it's noticeably faster than the browser on Android, at least there's that aspect. And as usual, Windows 10 means that you can install apps the X way. You got folders and you got all the goodness related to that. Once again, multiple desktops available here. And you can quickly switch to Android if you feel like it by pressing this button. Yes, and system switch to Android. Here we go. And now you're restarting and booting to the other OS which is Android 5.1.1 Lollipop in a stock version with maybe too many virtual buttons. Okay, so here we are in Android, it's Android 5.1.1 Lollipop and we got the multitasking experience here. It involves the usual carousel, we get once again a ton of uh, virtual buttons. We also have this extra menu button here and uh, everything is stock, the pre-installed apps, the widgets, Got some extras like the Techlast Boot Manager, Techlast Over the Air um, Upgrades, the UC Browser and there's that, so not much bloatware which is a thing we should be grateful for. Um, other than that, nothing special, the drop down area includes notifications and uh, of course quick settings. These are the settings, nothing special here either, it's typical Android Lollipop which is much more fluid than Windows 10 have to mention that and Windows 10 once again can be brief bricked if you attempt a recovery keep that in mind so we're done here we're done with the review of this tech last tablet time for the pros and cons on the pros the price is very appealing the tablet has a pretty solid build it's comfy the performance is not too shabby it's a dual boot device with pretty okay acoustics it's got an HDMI port and luckily no bloatware and sufficient storage space now on the con side 
the brightness is the lowest I've ever seen, that's a big problem. The touch will not exactly always respond to my presses, the battery is just there, the Wi-Fi drops a bit, Windows 10 tends to lag a bit, and the risk of breaking it is big when you're attempting a recovery. I would choose, frankly, the Chewy Hi12 over this tablet since we recently tested both. There are some compromises here, some of them too big to tolerate, and the screen is a big letdown. However, if you're the kind to gift this tablet to a, maybe a child or an older person who are going to use it to read newspapers and maybe play some mahjong, it will do just fine. It's a tablet for very little kids or very old people who just use it for mundane activities. That's basically it. This is it from tabletnews.com and you can find this Teclas tablet on Gearbest for $164. Bye bye.